everyone, and thank you for joining me at Chef Kills for the people. I am Chef Kills, and I salute you. Each and every one of you, baby. That's right. I want to thank you for riding with your boy. I appreciate each and every one of you. So please, continue to smash that subscribe button. Give me those thumbs up because you know I need those. And please, like and share my videos. We're going way up. I feel blessed, baby. Let's do this. We're saluting each and every one of you for all you do and all your support with some Pinot Grigio. So this toast is for you. Cheers. Mm. This toast is for my beautiful wife, Joanna, and me, Chef Kills, for the people. It's really good. I just want to give a special shout out to my grandbabies, Mila and Amina. Nana and Grandpa loves you, babies. Mucho beso, mucho beso, mucho beso. Let's get this popping, baby. God bless you and God bless America. Today we are going to make some freshly made garlic mashed potatoes and some deep fried Atlantic salmon wafers. It's different, but it's gonna work. Chef Kills guarantees it. You dig? All right, let's do this. These are Idaho rustic potatoes. I bought one huge one and a couple of small ones. And the cubes don't have to be perfect. I'm just doing it this way so that it uh, reduces uh, boiling time. That's all. I'm going to boil the potatoes on the stove top. And then I'm going to peel and crush some fresh garlic bulbs incorporate that in it along with some pink salt black pepper a little paprika or paprika <laughs> depends on where you're from and some butter I think it's going to taste really really good and it's different like I don't know too many people matches uh, mashed potatoes and salmon wafers. Deep fried at that. So I hope you enjoy it. I hope you try it. And I hope for your continued support. Because I need all that. And this is going to be a serving for two. So that's why I'm just using just these few potatoes. The other day I went to the supermarket and got a fillet of salmon with the skin on and I had my butcher person cut the skin off for me instead of me destroying it once I got home trying to do it. But uh, instead of buying regular individual salmon fillets, I did it like that, got the whole thing. So the whole, you know, the, the meat source and origin is all, you know, is all one fish, one piece. Instead of a whole bunch of pre-frozen fillets where you don't know how many different uh, uh, fish sauces, seafood sauces it came from uh, in the packaging of that product. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and put this in the water on the stove. Then I'm going to go ahead and take out the salmon filet and we're going to process that. So this is the salmon filet 
that I was describing earlier. It's a pretty large fillet here. I mean, look at this. It's, it's beautiful. Let me turn it over to the good side. Look at that. Nice, right? So here's what I use as a measurement in regards to sectioning off uh, salmon fillet. So my prep pad, the length of that is the cross section that I'm going to cut off so I can process it uh, properly and, you know, using good uh, sanitation methods so that it's not uh, uh, touching the countertop, although I disinfected the countertop every time I cook, uh, before and after. So instead of trying to cut it with a knife, I'm going to use my kitchen utility scissors and then I'm going to cut the length of the pad here and proportion this fillet. So about there, I'm going to go in right here. See how simple that is? Okay. So then, to make the, to cut the salmon wafers, I'm going to begin to cut the length of the wafers as such. Actually, you know what? Let's do something different. I'm going to cut it the long way first and section it like that, right down the center. Y'all see that? That is beautiful. And I'm using this here, this uh, lifeline here, as the guide to try to stay on a straight and narrow with my cut. See, look at that. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Now, I'm gonna flip this baby back around. And I'm going to start sectioning out my wafers. And be generous. Remember, you show somebody your love by ways of their stomach. You cook for them. You're providing them with sustenance and nutrition. And that's why I absolutely love and adore cooking for my wife. And I'm grateful that she loves my cooking as well as I love her cooking. Alright, so we got that there. You see the the length or the width of the wafer? Pretty nice. And it looks delicious too. Look at that. All the omega-3 oils. Really nice. So let me go ahead and hit this up. Now this portion is wider or thicker so what do you do well you just go a little more narrow with the cut so it's, it's not too disproportionate all right so i'm gonna go with something like this see it's beautiful i love salmon so if you'd like i would like to know what's your favorite fish Hit me up in the comments below and let me know what your favorite fish is and also how you like it prepared. And I will go ahead and make a video preparing your favorite fish and I'll even name it after you. How about that? <laughs> Okay, so there we have it. Very nice. So from here, we're gonna go ahead and uh, season it. And then we're gonna bread it. And then we're gonna deep fry it. Really good, it's gonna be very nice. Now that we have our cut, I'm gonna go ahead and throw it in my summer vibes bowl to get it nice and seasoned up
All right, and get rid of this. All right, so we have our salmon wafers in a bowl. Now let's go ahead and touch it with some seasoning. First and foremost, we're gonna put some uh, extra virgin olive oil in there, kind of like the glue to help the season or well, seasonings adhere to the meat. Then, first up, Himalayan pink salt. You guys know this is my favorite salt to use. Okay, we're gonna touch it up. Not a whole lot. We're gonna use our lemon pepper seasoning. It is going to be burning, baby. It's gonna be so good, watch. It is gonna be so good, best believe that. So we're gonna hit this up with just about, I don't know, that was what, eight shakes? Yeah, our measurement today is gonna to be in shakes. We got eight shakes of lemon pepper seasoning. We have about five or six shakes of Himalayan pink salt. We're gonna get down with some crushed red pepper flakes. We're gonna hit this with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight flakes. Eight shakes of the flakes. Remember when I should do this, guys? One, two, three, let's get it. All right, so we got 11 shakes of the flakes. Shakes of the flakes, uh, shakes of the flakes. Shakes of the flakes, uh, shakes of the flakes. Get it. Paprika. We're gonna go with one, a two, a three, a four, and a five, and a six, and a seven. That's a nice number. Seven shakes of the paprika. All right. Let's go ahead and incorporate this. See how I'm doing the flipping method? You don't want to squeeze it and mush it like you're ground pounding 80-20. <laughs> you want to treat this delicate as it is. Because you don't want the wafers to disintegrate and wind up being sushi crumbs. Alright, so this is what it looks like after you incorporate all the seasonings you see how the olive oil is making it glisten and shine and it's just all kinds of deliciousness going on in here so I'm just gonna let this uh, it's gonna be a very quick short marinade I'm gonna let this marinate for I don't know maybe 20 minutes 20-25 minutes and because uh, fish soaks up seasonings like a sponge so we're gonna go ahead and let this sit and uh, in the meanwhile in the between time I'm gonna go ahead and Go ahead and cut up the garlic cloves. All right, easy peasy, baby, easy peasy. All right, so now I have six little cross sections of clove, garlic clove, and I'm gonna go ahead, give it a smash first. I've already took the liberty of peeling them off camera. But you're gonna peel your garlic cloves, obviously, first. And then go ahead and smash them. Then we're going to go ahead and cut them up in smaller pieces there. And then what I'm going to do with this garlic is I'm going to use some uh, in the salmon wafers. And then I'm going to use the rest of it in the garlic mashed potatoes. And remember, what do I always say? Let's take a pop quiz. When you're preparing food, what do you want to do? Season to taste and taste your food. You all pass, you all get 100. So some of you may have noticed that when I was seasoning the uh, salmon filet, I didn't use no black pepper. I'm preparing this the way I'm going to enjoy it, just like I want you all to prepare your recipes that you get from me the way you feel you and your family is going to enjoy it. So that's why I always insert season to taste and taste your food. Uh, you may want black pepper, 
in addition to the black pepper that's in the lemon pepper seasoning. Uh, and that's fine. Just go ahead and add it and uh, I'm sure it's going to come out very well. Okay, so I have that done and I'm basically going to use about this much for the about this much, about half for the salmon and then I'm going to use this much for the mashed potatoes and the mashed potatoes are going to be robust with garlic and with butter and I'm going to use a little light cream for it as well so I'll go right into creating the wash uh, for my salmon wafers and that's going to be simple. So I know some of you cooks and chefs uh, may not perhaps prepare a egg wash uh, for it, but I do. Um, and that, yet again, like you, I put the olive oil so that the seasonings adhere to the cooking surface of the seafood and or meat. Well, the egg wash allows the breading or breadcrumbs, flour, what have you, to adhere better to the meat or seafood product that you're preparing as well. So to do that, I'm going to crack a brown egg. I just prefer brown eggs, but you can use whatever you want. You can use brown, you can use white eggs, it doesn't matter. Because taste is not going to be a factor. It's a non-starter uh, when you're using it as a wash. And then I'm gonna use spring water. Probably maybe, uh, I don't know, five tablespoons. And I'm gonna go ahead and whip it. And then that's gonna just stand alone. I'm not gonna season it. Uh, that's the only thing I'm gonna do with it. So the salmon will go from the egg wash to the flour to the pot and I'm going to deep fry it. All right, so we're gonna move this ooh, over to the side like that. I'm gonna add the garlic to that now. And I'm using for the breading, it's a breading, dry breading called uh, House Autry. That's A U T R Y. It's pretty good. They have seafood breading, they have chicken, pork. It's really nice. So you see that? Look at that. It's beautiful, right? Let's incorporate those garlic pieces in here. All right, this is the egg wash that I whipped up with a fork, nothing, nothing fancy. Okay, so now I'm going to simply dump wafer. As a matter of fact, let me move this camera up here a little closer for you so you can see this. This is like really nice. Really nice. Okay. So, simple technique. Goes from the wash to the flour. Look at that. Easy peasy. Anybody can do this. Anybody. All right, let me go wash my hands. So I'm just gonna take a fork and I'm gonna flip it like that so I can get it nice and breaded.
See, look at that. Very nice. So I'm gonna get a plate, put that right here. And then all of the wafers, salmon wafers is gonna be placed on the plate. And then the next phase is going to be to put it in the pot. See, easy. That egg wash really helps it adhere, uh, the breading adhere to the uh, <clears throat> to your um, seafood surface in this case. So same thing, I have my dry ham, I have my wet ham. Wet ham's gonna go here, put it in the dry. And there you have it. So let me go ahead and finish processing the rest of this and then we move on to the next phase, okay? All right, so here we have the strained, <coughs> pardon me, the strained potatoes for the potato salad. I'm not gonna continue to process that yet. I'm gonna get the salmon um, uh, wafers out the way. But just an honorable mention, I'm gonna go ahead and add into the potato uh, mashed potatoes pure dairy or dairy pure light cream and we use about a little bit less than a half a stick of uh, butter and I'm gonna use some pink salt and some black pepper and last but not least we're gonna use the rest of these uh, nice crushed garlic pieces here it's gonna be beautiful so for now let's go ahead and focus on the salmon All right, and this is what it looks like after all the pieces of bread it really nice looks beautiful okay and this is gonna be my drainage vessel like I said any you know household products you can use ingredients what's in your refrigerator freezer or cupboard you too can prepare something very delicious chef kills for the people guarantees it. And as always, you know while I'm cooking, I'm celebrating with wines and spirits, baby. Yeah. Okay, right, so we're frying this. Deep fry. It's been in here for about, I don't know, maybe three minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and start taking these out. Okay? Look at that. Beautiful, picture perfect.
And try to drain as much of the oil out as you can before you put it in your strainer. This way your straining system don't have to work too hard to get rid of or to expel the excess oil in these wafers. So again, total cooking time for these salmon wafers are uh, anywhere between three, I'm gonna say three and four minutes. Again, you don't wanna put them in there too long because it's seafood. Seafood don't need to cook too long. It just has to be the right temperature and long enough so that it is cooked enough so you don't get sick. Very important. All right, so I'll go ahead and finish this up for you. So now we're going to go ahead and complete the garlic mashed potatoes right there. See, look, nice, very good. So first thing we're gonna do it's gonna pour just a little bit. I don't know. Let me see here. Let's let's do splashes. How about that? Our measurements of the day for the light cream will be splashes. Ready? Splash. One splash. Two splash. Three splash. Four. That's all we're doing. Four splashes of sour cream. We're gonna go ahead and incorporate the garlic. Remember these uh, the little crushed garlic here. Remember that? Remember that? Well, it's going in. Look, bam, just like that. Okay. We're going to go with some black pepper. Really nice. One, two, three, get it. And we're going to use some Himalayan pink salt. One, two, three, let's get it. And we're going to use. I'm gonna microwave this just about maybe for like five, six, seven seconds, right? Cause uh, I did it and then it sat out and then it started um, getting solid again. So let's do this. All right, that's cool. All right. See, nice and loosey. Loosey goosey. All right, here we go. Very nice. Okay. Let's stomp the yard with this here. Potato masher, stomp the yard. Okay. So while we're stomping this, potatoes here, I have it under a medium heat on my stove top and I just want to take the time to say Mila and Amina Nana and Grandpa loves you very much he loves you very much and we miss you dearly you're both in our thoughts each and every day and each and every night Being grandparents is very special. It's a beautiful thing, and we love it. <clears throat> All right. And my way of uh, making these potatoes, I'm not looking for a creamy consistency. I'm not looking for creamy to, uh, uh, potatoes. I'm looking for some nice russet flavorful mashed potatoes. So this way when you put it in your mouth, ah, it's a beautiful textual experience, flavorful and very pleasing to your palate. 
and it's just downright all goodness. So let me put that there. I'm gonna stir this up a little bit. That is beautiful. <laughs> it is beautiful. Okay, so now I'm going to put first I'm gonna clean this spoon off here. And do this a little bit, I'm gonna taste it. Oh my god. <laughs> this is beautiful. Alright, so remember, season to taste, taste your food. I just season to taste and I just taste my food. And it requires just a little bit more of Himalayan pink salt. So you ready? One, two, three, let's get it. Stir that up a little bit. And I'm gonna put a little bit more butter in it. Maybe a quarter bar more of butter. Like that. Let it sit. And I like making, yeah, make way, make way, crowd control, baby. Make way for the butter. Then I'm gonna cover so that it's touching the bottom of the uh, pot. So it'll go ahead and melt a little quicker. And then I'm gonna go ahead and bury the butter and some of these potatoes. So the next time I stir it, which will probably be in another three minutes, is going to be nice and melted and ready to go. All right, let's stir this up for the last time. Beautiful. These mashed potatoes, garlic mashed potatoes, are finished and ready to be plated. We're gonna finish up these salmon wafers with a little bit of melted butter. That's about, uh, let me see, a little more than a quarter bar. We're gonna add some lemon juice. We're gonna, last but not least, add some nice Cajun sunshine hot sauce. One, two, three, let's get it. Remix. One, two, three, let's get it. All right, we good. Just stir that up a little bit. Make sure everything is incorporated. Now, I'm not even going to brush it on there. I'm going to pour it on there because I'm like that. Here we go. Wait. Make sure it's nice and pretty looking for you. All right. Pour. Oh, my God. I wish I had smell of vision But, ladies and gentlemen, when you... And I hope you do. Prepare this recipe at home. <laughs> Stand by. You are gonna love it. And if you love it, let me know. Drop me a line in the comments and say, Chef Kills, I love this recipe. If you hate it, say, Chef Kills, I hate this recipe. And here's why. And then we'll go over that. We'll work that out. I promise. So now, that's your finished product. 
of the deep fried salmon wafers. So we're gonna go ahead and plate the potatoes and we're gonna get this popping. And then me and my wife, we're gonna eat. So I hope you're eating too. Let's eat together. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Chef Kills for the People Salmon Waffles Deep Fry with, with some homemade mashed potatoes and garlic with a little dollop of sour cream, baby. Enjoy. God bless you and God bless America.